What's so, up? Here we are again. Uh, this is a continuation of what has really became a four-part um, season finale of Talking Scared. We uh, we saw the minister uh, return to his uh, his old beautiful form, his old beautiful self, on Thursday night. And him and uh, <clears throat> excuse me, him and the grave digger had a very interesting conversation, and some uh, interesting things happened. He was uh, actually supposed to be here this evening. And, um, man, he's just straight up gone. Like, there's no, no sign of him at all. He's completely uh, checked out. Um, so hopefully he will be back here before tomorrow because he's supposed to be doing the season finale. Um, but he said he had some things that he was going to deal with. Somebody's been um, very disobedient, apparently. And he is um, he's not happy. So he's, he's out handling that right now. And um, hopefully, hopefully he'll be back tomorrow. And um, also, so let's see what else here. Um, oh, yeah, Monday night. We also have a, a two-part season finale, right? So Sunday, um, we'll be uh, talking with Piggy. Um, the infamous terror known as Piggy from Hillside Horror. We'll be talking to him. And then we will also be talking with Moist the Clown on Monday night. And that's going to conclude it, man. That's it. That's it. Talking Scared's over. There's no more episodes. That's it. No more. Well, except for one, so I guess it's not really the full-blown season finale. We'll be talking to Scab the Clown um, from uh, Scurry Face, Jim Lattimore, uh, Con Artiste, a man of many titles and many names. Many titles and many names. We'll be talking to him as well. Um, tonight, what we got going on tonight is a little different. We've never done this before, and uh, I'll be honest, Trish and I were a little back and forth on it as to whether or not this was something we wanted to do, wanted to try, um, and we do. So what we're going to do tonight is we have um, somebody that's been around um, with us uh, almost since the beginning. Yeah. Um, for as, as much as I can remember, um, he's, he's been around pretty much since the beginning. Uh, Louie, he's going to be talking to us tonight. He went to a haunt that we weren't able to go to. Um, we did get to speak to the owner of it, but he got to go to Kim's Crypt and um, do their overnight experience. And we're going to talk to him about it today. We're also going to talk to Louie about Louie. We're also going to do the Battle of the Five. Right? Because, you know, that's what we do. We always do the Battle of the Five now because it's fucking fun. We enjoy it. Um, hopefully Scurry Face won't get on here and get all technical with us and everything like that. But we'll see. They might. If they do. If they do, it's fine. Um, but a couple updates we wanted to go over before we bring Louie on to talk about Kim's Crypt and to talk about what got him into horror. What, what makes him want to listen to some weirdo like me and, you know, get cussed at by the minister every once in a while. I, you know, what makes him want to be a part of this? And um, we're, we're going to find out what makes Louie tick a little bit tonight. And we're going to find out about Kim's crib. And he's going to be the first person ever, ever in the history of Haunted Honeymooners to come on here and put ratings down on another haunt. All right? So, we again, we thought long and hard about this. We're very excited to be able to do this. Um, we, we think this is uh, a good direction. This is a consumer-based review team. And Louie's a consumer. And, you know, we want to know what he thought of a haunt that we weren't able to participate in. Um, as far as the likes, good God Almighty, thank you all so much. Um, insane. Insane amount of likes. We've talked about it before. We were hoping to be around 2,000 to 2,500 approaching haunt season this year. And we have absolutely, uh, no, you have absolutely blew that number out of the water. We are approaching 7,500 likes um, I believe we're 7,400 some. It might be 7,300 some. Uh, Trish is looking right 7, now. 7,349. 7,349. So 7,349 likes as of right now. Um, that being said, we've increased our goal, obviously. We want to see that number continue to grow. So our goal is that by the time Talking Scared 20, uh, 2020 hits, Season 2 hits, um, first Monday in January, uh, we'd like to be at 10,000. 10,000 is the goal. So that's what we're shooting for. And if we can get to that 10,000 mark by then, we'll think of some crazy uh, some crazy ass shit that we'll do. Um, so let, that's the goal. 10,000. So share. Tell your friends. Tell your enemies. Tell Share it to other groups. Share this shit right now. Let's get some numbers up for Louie. All right. Let's see let's see if we can uh, bring as many people in as we possibly can. Um, we're going to be bringing Louie on here very, very shortly. Um, so again, we got the season finale um, coming up tomorrow night. It's the last time we're going to talk about it because then tomorrow night it goes down. But one thing I did want to talk about it with is the arrangement that the minister has made with Grave... Or shit, Grave Digger, excuse me. 
um, with Piggy and with Moist. So the minister has agreed that no matter what, no matter what happens, he's going to eat a zebra tarantula. All right, and it's been tasked to me to find it. I think I've got the location of the, of the tarantulas hunted down. All right, so we're going we're, we're gonna to bring the tarantulas in, um, dead, salted tarantulas, okay? And I, I, the minister is going to partake in one, and then whoever has the fewest views after 24 hours, whether it's Piggy or whether it's Moist, that, that loser is going to be eating the zebra tarantula as well um, on their next live feed. So very excited, and while I love Piggy to death, I love him to death, I want to see him eat the shit. I do too, man. I do too. And I, I want to see them both do well. I want to see them both just get crazy numbers. It'd be an awesome night. But I hope, <sighs> Piggy, I know you may not be watching right now. I know you're going to at some point. I love you, brother. I do. But I so want to each watch you eat a tarantula so bad. I imagine the video. Oh, man. It will be epic. It'll be absolutely the most epic thing ever. Um, not that Moist is just going to suck it on down either. But maybe. I don't know. I don't know. But anyways, somebody's eating a goddamn spider. Okay? We Who's know... making picky squill? <laughs> we know for sure um, the minister's going to be eating a spider. And um, we'll see who else. But somebody else is going to be eating a spider as well. <laughs> Hi, helpers. Uh, no, he was actually sober as a monkey. Um, just to be, I mean, as far as I know. I think he was. I think he was pretty. He sober. might have woke up the next morning. Oh shit! <laughs> no, he's he's regretted it ever since. Like I mean, he's <laughs> not happy about it at all. We have a uh, um, experienced terror team. We have our own little group message board and stuff. And uh, it's uh, he's not he's not excited at all about this about this. But it is what it is, man. He's gonna do it. And we're we're excited to to, uh, to see him do it. So see if you want to see Piggy eat the spider, you have to like Moist. If you want to see Moist. Eat the spider. You have to like piggy. Just watch both of them. All right, just watch both of them. Ignore, ignore the person behind the curtain. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, yeah, just watch both of them. It's gonna be they're they're gonna be really good shows. We got some cameo appearances coming up, and I will go ahead and say we haven't even hinted at who is going to kick off season two. And if we're booked up through June, clearly we have to know who's going to be kicking the season off, right? You would think that we would have thought ahead like that and not just booked it up and just forgot about the season opener of season two. You will find out who's going to be opening up season two at the end of the episode with Moist. So Monday night, the very last thing. The very last what? Poor Biggie. <laughs> He'll be all right. The very last thing we're going to do is talk about who's going to be kicking off season two of Talking Scared. Very excited to, to have them on, man. It's... It's going to be cool as shit. It's going to be cool as shit. So we'll, they'll, they'll be making a cameo appearance, all right, at the end of it. So if you want to find out who's kicking off season two, and it's a big one. It's a fucking big one, man. This is, uh, I'm very excited. Very fucking excited. And there, you guys have no clue at all. They haven't mentioned word of it. We haven't mentioned word of it. It is a, it is a secret amongst, I think, four people. And that's it. And, um, yeah, we're pretty stoked. Pretty stoked. Um, to, to bring that announcement to you. It's really not even an announcement. You just got to check it out. You just got to watch, man. Uh, both episodes, we're going to have cameo appearances in Piggy's episode by people that have been on Talking Scared already. We're going to have some appearances for Moist's episode as well as the reveal. So who's going to be kicking off season two of Talking Scared? And you don't want to miss it. It's going to be fucking awesome. Season two of Talking Scared in and of itself is going to be awesome. We're going to have a whole new platform, a whole new way that we do it. It's going to be a little bit of a different show. Um, it's going to focus on the interviews, but we're going to add a lot more to it, bring a lot more to the table, and, and see how we can um, change it up a little bit and make it a little more entertaining, bring a little bit more, uh, a little more value for you guys. Um, those that have been following Science Behind the Scares, and if you haven't or you aren't, go check Nick out. Go give his page a like. Science Behind the Scare. We did an interview with him uh, about a week ago now. Um, it's still on there. Obviously, you can go check it out. We had a really good time with Nick. But all the winnings for our particular people, um, we've got them sent over to Nick. They're on their way up to him in Ohio. And we also got a mailing out that we needed to get out. So right now, we're completely caught up. <laughs> we're, we're good. Sorry, Ella. We're good for now. We're good for now. One last announcement before we bring Louie on. Um, fantasy football. All right? Those of you that are in... Um, if you have any questions, I've had a couple people ask questions. 
Um, I, I will get back to you. I know I said that I was going to explain it during the live feed, but I don't really think that's that's necessary. Um, I will get back to you, okay? I, I've seen your messages, and I'll get in touch with you. We're going to have the draft, hopefully. September 1st is kind of what I'm thinking. It'll be a snake draft, and if you don't know what a snake draft is, that's perfectly fine. I will explain it as well. Um, but it's going to be a fun time, all right? we got 12 players, 12 participants. Um, I need one, unless you found the last one. No, we, we're good. Okay. Yeah, we're good. We, we have 12. Um, so it's it's going to be a fun time. We're really excited to do this. Give us a chance to interact with the fans a little bit more. And, you know, and it gives 12 people or 11, well, 10 people, excuse me, um, the spot to do something with us on a little bit more of a personal basis and see if they can uh, see if they can uh, outwit us, outwit us in football. I doubt it, man, that title. And we're going to get that title ordered so that we can have it right here where it's supposed to be anyways during the season. And, um, but you know, we're, it's, it's going to stay right here. It's going to stay right here. Okay. Um, Louie, you can send that request. I might actually be able to bring you on. Let's see here. Yeah, I got it. Haunt Helpers is freaking out about that spider. Tell Haunt Helpers. They'll be okay. Hey, what's going on? Uh, you know, just getting ready for bed with the five-year-old. <laughs> uh, you're a little muffled over there. Um, let me check. I think I should. My car for him. Hold on one second. You're good, man. You're good, man. <laughs> good old Long Island night. Can you hear me? Can you guys hear me better? All right, man. You hear us all right? Yep. Cool. All right. We're hearing you beautifully now. Awesome, man. All right. So this is Louis B. Um, for those that, uh, that, you know, obviously may be wondering who exactly is we got going on tonight on a very, very different Episode of Talking Scared, but you know, hey, it's the season finale, so why not change it up a little bit? Um, we've been talking to Louie a little bit. He went to Kim's trip, did the overnight experience, and we wanted to uh, we wanted to find out all about it. We weren't able to go. We were up in Omaha at the time that, that, that was going on. Um, and so we were going to bring on somebody in the He's one of the original people to drink Ministry of Darkness. Crazy as that, that sounds. Man, back when there was a time, he was friend of the minister. 
Um, <laughs> you know, we have a good day to prove it. So uh, let, let's talk about that number one. I mean, have you been doing what you said? Have you been spreading his word? I try as much as possible, but, you know, a lot of people are scared of the minister for whatever reason. <laughs> I, I know him as this, yeah, I, I know him as this cuddly little bear, but you know. You see, there's more of these rumors of this cuddly, <laughs> cuddly little bear. I think somebody, I'm not, somebody started some shit, man. He's gonna lose his fucking mind. Um, so he, he did send his regards. He apologizes for not being with you. You know, this it's evening, all right. But he's. I, I don't know if you saw what went down Thursday night. He, his hands are full right now. There's been some shit Understandable. going down, and he's, he's trying to be able to... So he's supposed to be here tomorrow night. Let's see. He's an <laughs> he shows up whenever he wants. Um, well, let's, uh, let's talk about you a little bit before we get into some scripture stuff, man. What got you into horror? I've been into horror as far as I can remember. Five years old, I was watching Pet Cemetery in Maine, and I actually went to go visit one of the, the uh, filming studios for it. So I've just... I've been obsessed with it my whole life. Yeah. I, I even have cool. horror movies. I have horror movies tattooed on me. You know, Damn, it's just, right. what, what, what movies you got tattooed on you? I got I got killer clowns from outer space on both sides of my ribs, That's and then I on the back of my neck I have red rum from The Shining. So okay. very cool, very cool. Yeah. Um, if we're if we're talking about clowns and movies for a second, did you get to <laughs> Terrifier yet? It it was good. I'm 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 a, I'm a big fan of clowns as is, so I definitely gave it a chance. I'm excited for part two. See how that goes. I am too. Very cool. Well, that's cool. Shit, man. What's, um, what's your favorite horror movie? If you had to pick one. Oh, that's that's always the hardest question. That's yeah. like trying to pick your favorite child. <laughs> but um, I'd probably have to go with the remake of Halloween. The Rob Zombie version. Yes. Very, I like that answer. I like that answer. You know, that movie, I don't think it's the credit it deserves. Um, Absolutely. It was, uh, it, was, it was a really, really, it was well done. You know, gave a little yeah. story on Michael Myers, and, you know, the most backstory you're ever going to get on him. And, and Dad's character awesome. Go yeah. check out Dad. Yeah. No, it was, it was really well done. All right. I'm waiting for 31 also. Ah, yeah. We are, too. We are, too. I, I, I love <laughs> I love man. Uh, I can't wait. And then we got we got three from hell coming up too. Um, about yep, the, yep. That's, that's I hope I hope that's as good as I'm feeling like it's gonna be. But I, I think it's gonna be killer. Zombie doesn't make a bad movie. Uh, now I will disagree. There was one. Salem. Did you watch Lords of Salem? No. Okay, you got to go watch Lords of Salem. It's gonna make you reevaluate that statement. And the first half. Oh man. What are we talking about? It's it's. it's, <laughs> it's it's got some Rob Zombie cool to it, but it's like, it feels like halfway through the movie, he got way too fucked up to continue yeah. to direct the movie. No, <laughs> well, I think he was really, really cool. In the second half, he was cool. No, I don't know. It was, <laughs> it was a train wreck. It was an absolute train wreck. But you have to watch it. Let us know what you think. You've made one, man. It's out there. It's out there. It's Lords of Salem. Mm. All right. Before we go on to anything else, we, uh, yeah, you're not talking scared. All right, so it's it's obviously time for, for the battle of the five. If you think you're All right. ready for it, you ready to, ready to tangle with this tonight? I I could try. All right, we got some good ones on here. All right, so we're gonna test we're gonna test your levels, see what your knowledge is. All right, first one, kind of easy, I think. Um, so the two that we've seen that always seem to win, Wolverine and Thor. Almost every single episode, somebody always gives them a victory. We've never put them against each other. So lucky for you, you get to have those two kick it off with. So fight to the death, <laughs> Wolverine versus Thor, who walks out on top. Hmm. I'm going to go Wolverine. Okay. All right. Why are you <laughs> Sorry, <that>? Trish. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, Wolverine's just a badass. Like A lot of Thor's power is with the hammer. If he doesn't have a hammer, what is he going to do? Wolverine, it's just you have a Wolverine. Like Wolverine has dealt with so much more in his life. It's just it, it's it's in him. Yeah, it's just true. it's. He's almost he, too stubborn to, to to lose the fight. Ah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> All 
All right, so we got Wolverine. Wolverine taking the round one. Um, all right, so we want to know a uh, little battle of vampires here. And this fight will take place in darkness, so oh, so no no advantage there. Um, but we have Celine from the Underworld series versus Blade. Um, and again, with regards to Blade, it's no, no advantage with no Blade or anything like that. Hmm. I think I'm going with Selena. I like that answer. See, I thought you were going to go with Blade, man. I, I no, see, see I, I'm not a big Blade <laughs> fan. I, I, I like, I, I love the Underworld series. Always yep. thought it was great. The Blade series, I wasn't a big fan of it. Ah, uh, <laughs> the first one was good. It did, it did tell off pretty hard. After yeah, I did enjoy the first Blade. Blade <clears> three <throat> was terrible, man. I was. Uh, that's I'm right done. there with Lords of Salem, man. Bad movie. <laughs> um, but anyways. I'm done. Okay, so moving on to the third one. Um, this one was more Trish's idea. Um, Uh-oh. She got Shut really up. excited about it. <laughs> so, uh, I'm, sure you've seen, I'm sure you've seen us have Gravedigger on. All right, so we got a fight to the death, pitting Gravedigger against the minister. Who comes in with that? Oh, man. This, this might be the hardest question of the night. <laughs> <laughs> is there a right answer? Like, no, I, probably not. No. <laughs> no. The, um, man, I hate to do it, but Grave Digger. What? Yeah, he just. Oh, what? Grave he he just he he just has that sinister like mindset all the time. Man, remember, I'm I'm, I'm, I'm not. <laughs> We can't let him ever see it. Let me send him the video straight to Louie. <laughs> I, I don't promise he doesn't have a response to that at some point in time. He might, oh. he might lose his shit over that. I, I, can, I don't know, but I, I have the minister's picture right on my nightstand right near my bed, so, you know. <laughs> that is true. I'm one of the very few people on planet Earth that sent an autographed photo <clears throat> of the minister, and uh, apparently... Apparently, he wakes up to it every day. <laughs> that was, 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 he man. Oh, but I love Lionel. I can agree with that. Oh man, the He Man would rip him apart. He man. It'd be bad. Like Lionel's a giant cat. <laughs> but I like it. <laughs> <laughs> After crossing He Man, I don't know if you saw it or not. But he Man has a sword. <laughs> He's really buff, and, and like you said, Lionel. Lionel's. A Lionel. Guy. Lionel's gonna like come and purr at him. <laughs> You throw you throw some catnip on the floor and Lionel's <laughs> done. Little catnip. <laughs> Can of tuna? Call it call I'm it a day. With you too. Call it a day. <laughs> the last one we got. We want to go with um the Marine from the Doom series, Doom Guy, whatever you want to call him. Um, versus Marcus Phoenix from the Gears of War series. Who you got? Mm. Probably the Doom guy. He, he's depends on the weapons. Yeah, it depends on the weapons. But I, I also I grew up on Doom. Like that was one of the first computer games I ever played. With all that glitchy graphics, it was just <laughs> that was something I always thought. I was like, man, this would be a great. Like life to live, just go fight monsters all the time. That's an awesome mindset. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> Never gonna get a zombie apocalypse, at least in my lifetime. So you know that. That's like you don't know. I mean, maybe. Uh, all the kids, kids on their cell phones all the time is probably as close as we're gonna get. Yeah, yeah, probably. All right, so so one last question on that one because I'm just curious. Take the guns away. All right, it's just straight. Straight hand to hand combat. You still you still go with Doom guy? Uh, I think I'll have to change my answer on that one. Marcus is a pretty bad bad motherfucker. Yeah. 
Yeah, he really is. But you know, the stuff he survived. I mean, getting swallowed by a worm and chainsawing your way to the court. It all depends on the situation. You know, everyone has their weak points, so it, it's hard. Yet, man, I, I've played. I've played a lot of him. Man, he just seems to just keep on walking, man. Just, just doing what he's gonna do. This is this is true. This is true. I love the Doom guy too. I can't wait for Doom Eternal to come out in November. I'm very very excited, um, and I've, I've played all of them for the most part. Again, yeah, I, I, even even the terribly bad Doom Three, I even suffered through it. <laughs> all the way through it. Um, so I'm with you. I'm with you. I I, I agree with you. Marcus Phoenix came to hand. Doom guy with the weapons for sure. Absolutely. I, I, had the BFG. There's just that's not even fair. Exactly. <laughs> All right, man. Um, so getting back to you, uh, how long have you been going to haunted houses, man? My whole life. I'm 31, so I'd probably say at least uh, 20, 25 years. Nice. And now I met a I met a girl last year. We actually started a tradition. We go to Halloween horror nights every year from now on. We go to we travel to different states, go to different haunted houses that we hear of all the time. So my goal is to hit between five and ten haunted houses a year, if possible. And Kim's crypt offering the things in the summer keeps the spirit alive all year. Very cool, very cool. You you you've heard about the contest that we're having, right? Like you're aware. Yep, yep. All right, cool. I was just I, that's all I'm gonna say about it. Just <laughs> leave it there. Um, we are, we are, we are a little thing going on. Um, if you're if you're interested, um, so this is going to be a tough one with the amount of haunted houses you've been to. Um, but shit, do you have a favorite? I, Halloween Horror Nights takes it only because you get six different haunted houses and all the different scare zones. Like what brought me in last year was the killer clowns from outer space having their whole scare zone. I literally spent probably two hours dancing with the clowns, taking pictures, just hanging out. But uh, it, like on Long Island, would probably have to be Dark Side. That's one of the biggest ones, like best named one out here. Um, but every state has a great one. It's hard to just pick one. Yeah, that's true. Um, so. Let's let's talk about Kim's Crypt a, a little bit. This was Kim's Crypt was more of an immersive hunt, right? A good bit of physicality, throwing around, yeah, yeah. stuff like that. Was that your was first? Awesome. Was that your first hunt that was like that? Yes. Yeah, that's actually what made me sign up and want to be a part of it. Was it was a more realistic haunted house, and they tried to put the fear into you more than just you know robots popping out or yeah. little kids in a mask everywhere. Yeah. Because you know like. My experience, I already know to look for shadows in the dark or footsteps coming at me. With the immersive, you're getting a bag over your head and you're getting zip tied. You don't know what's going on. Yeah, and that's that's the best stuff. Yeah, it is, man. That's awesome. That's, I that's, really loved it. Uh, it's it's it was probably one of the greatest experiences I've ever had doing such a thing. Everyone that's thinks really, I'm crazy. That's so awesome, man. I love I love yeah. that from somebody else. Sometimes you do these things. And and, you still look up. Yeah, like I can remember when we first did Shock Theater. The Scare House wasn't too bad, but when we did Shock Theater, like that was there was some envelopes that were pushed inside. <laughs> and you're, like, and you're just like, man, is there something wrong with me? Like I, I don't feel like I should be coming in here and the stuff they just did, and and be you know, anxiously awaiting to go back. And it, it's so cool to to hear someone else have that same experience to go through one the first time and just be like, man, this is, this is the shit. Um, yeah, I had a smile on my face the whole time, just waiting for the next experience to happen. Very cool, very cool. Now, we obviously don't want to give away too much of what's going on inside, but uh, give us a little, little sample. Maybe um, what maybe your favorite moment or, or the moment that, that scared you more than any other moment. Mm -hmm. um, the moment that scared me was I went with my girlfriend, and we were both right there. Like, we thought we were walking to go get some s'mores at the end of the night. And all of a sudden, we were bombarded by a bunch of goons in masks, <laughs> burlap sacks thrown over our face. We were zip-tied right there. And we were split up for about 45 minutes to an hour having different experiences. That is so, so cool. 
yeah, like you, you don't know what's going on. Like my biggest fear was making sure she was okay because yeah. you know she's a little four foot eleven girl compared to me. So yeah. the big, the biggest fear was getting split up. But like, like I, I encourage all of it. Like I wouldn't have signed up and paid so much money if I wasn't prepared for the worst to happen. Yeah, yeah. Um, so let, let's talk about that for a second. How much did this experience cost you? I think it was a hundred and fifty dollars, but I I upgraded to get the um the collector's hoodie instead of just the t shirt. I actually bought the t shirt out of the gift shop to go with it. Uh you got a backpack and a pin and you get you got meals included, so the money was definitely well worth it. I actually even got tattooed. Like I, I got a little skull on my thigh and it says Kim's Crip nineteen. So even just the just the tattoo alone was worth the entire amount that I paid. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's so, cool, man. Kim's up there paying people up. <laughs> <That's so cool. laughs> I, I, this is, I, I've actually went to Kim's Crypt for the Haunted House last year, and yeah. I actually got to know Kim, and her and I have sat and talked for like 15, 20 minutes while I was there. And then I, when I went back this year, her and I just picked it up as if we knew each other forever and we're talking again. Yeah. And she's, she's one of the most greatest humble people i've met doing such a thing yeah and so much energy man so much energy just oh absolutely <laughs> he is, he is just out of control with it man it's so cool <laughs> all right well let's um let's, let's talk about you know the physicality and the fun aspect of it um did you feel safe while you were there did you ever feel like they crossed the line or, or anything like that I actually wish they would have went a little harder, you know, just just because of the amount that I paid yeah. and having to sign a waiver. Like, they made it seem like it was going to be a lot worse than what it was. But I also understand, you know, there's, there's people with asthma or, type, like, certain health conditions that you can't cross certain lines without actually hurting someone. Yeah. So for what for what it was, it was definitely great. But I could have expected a little more, especially it being her last year for a while. But, you know, this is all things that she can just take into account. And when she comes back, she just makes it even harder and even better. He's, uh, he's got that. that, that I, I keep smiling at Trish because it, it's crazy how much you sound like us when we first started doing this stuff. And you, you come out and you're like, I wish they would have just, they could have pushed it more. And yeah. I, remember, I remember telling Scarehouse, I don't want to get into the scene and give away what they were doing, although – it's over and done with, but they, they asked us at the end, they were like, what'd you think? And they have all this buildup and this climax for this scene where they act like they're going to electrocute you. And then they don't. And I was like, why don't you actually do it? I mean, yeah. you, you exposed us to a little bit of electricity earlier. You know, I'm not saying shock the shit out of us, but enough to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah I, I got zapped four times. You know, exactly. Just to feel that initial, just that initial charge, man. That's going to absolutely be for some people. Yeah. Um, you know, and I, yeah, I, I'm with you. I like that. I like that. I want to see it more. And I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, you got bit by that bug, and you're going to be looking for the next step now. Absolutely, yeah. I know there's the one in the in New York City that's like 13 floors or whatever that they say even Marines can't get through. That's the, that's that's the one I want to do. I've heard of it. I'm not, I'm not familiar. I'm not familiar enough with it yet to really say whether or not I do or do do or don't support that one. Um, mm -hmm. I want to learn more about it. I want to find out more about it. Make sure it's not like a McCamey Manor 2.0, because obviously that's not our thing. But um, but I'm with you. You know, something if it's like an actual psychological test and yeah, and a little bit of an endurance run and stuff like that, I can deal with and handle. And I'm good with it as long as you know the controls there and all that good stuff. But yeah, I've, yeah, I've, I've heard of that one, and I'm interested in it. Um, you know, blackout's coming back. Too. Not Absolutely. Where you want. Yeah, I'm, I plan on going to it. Okay. Have you have you done any of the pledges yet? No, you unfortunately. I, yeah, I've, I've been I've been a little busy with work and everything. I okay. actually just suffered a hip injury the other day at work. I've been limping the last few days. Sorry to hear that. <laughs> yeah, we uh, they're we, going fast. Yeah, the, the tickets are going to sell like it's going to be nuts. Um. We, uh, I'll tell you the one that he gave me to tell you about me when to do the 500 one. Hey, Justin? Yeah. Tell you that you heard it from a reputable source. 
that without at least getting the 150 for the early edition and getting tickets, you have a less than 1% chance. Wow. We're pretty stoked about this. So we, we pledge um, on their Kickstarter program. That's all, all the money is going to their actors, which I like. Um, I'm good with that. Um, we made a pledge on there. So we're guaranteed two tickets and um, in an hour of uh, backstage time. Um, which, which is awesome. Yeah, that's, I'm so excited about that to get, <clears throat> to get to see that and experience some of that. And they said if you play your cards right, they might even let you grab a flashlight and join in on the fun for a minute. And, you know, that's pretty cool from the other side which would be really cool yeah that would be awesome um, yeah, I, i've been i've been considering actually uh signing up as a haunter for a little while at some of the local haunted houses here cool. very cool you know it, it, it'd be cool to be on the other side of it maybe bring a different level to what these people are used to having yeah get get like a consumer's idea out there and Because, like, my goal is I want to open up a haunted house that's year-round, every month have a different theme for every holiday, and bring in a whole different experience that most of these haunted houses just aren't bringing to the people that want it. And kind of, like, combine a walk through haunted house at times, and then at other times it's an immersive horror experience. And Absolutely. Yeah, get out of my head, dude. <laughs> 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 um, well, anyway... Let's get back into Kim's crypt for now um, before we reveal too much of anything else that we do or don't I know. have. I know. <laughs> we, we, I, don't, I, didn't, I didn't even really want to say it because it's still very much a ground project, but we have something that we're working on. And I'm awesome. going to leave it at that. It's enough that it's got a story and we're talking to some people about it and And hoping, hoping maybe, two years. maybe about about a year and a half, two years, we're, we're hoping to actually bring something to the table that's going to be pretty exciting. And you're the first person that's got to <laughs> even, like mention yeah. this, that it's just a possibility. <laughs> to to uh, yeah, yeah. I'm like he said, it's just what I do. Anyway, <laughs> um, so let's, let's talk about Kim's trip a little bit more here before we get into the ratings. And I hope you're ready. I hope you're ready to put the ratings on them and let us, let us know. Yeah, no, of course. Um, looking back at the whole experience, was there anything in particular that sticks out to mind, good or bad, that you really took away from the experience? Uh, all the actors were great. They played their part from as soon as we pulled up in the parking lot until we pulled away the next morning, 13 hours later. I, my, my first experience was even before I got through security, I had one, I think it was Kim's son or someone's son came up and handcuffed me and started spray painting me right away before I even got in. So I, I already knew what I was in for the rest of the night. And it's just, the actors just play their part amazingly. They never, they never fall off. And it was just, it was great. The only bad experience was the time went so quick. You don't realize 13 hours of being tortured in haunted houses goes so quick. Yeah, uh, we've been done a 13 hour one, yeah, man. But that's that, man, that speaks volumes as to what they got going on at 13 hours went so quickly. Absolutely. Um, last question before we get into the ratings, man. Um, and this doesn't have anything to do with Kim's crypt. Uh, what you got in store for uh, for the hot season this year? What are you looking at going to? What, what's up to make this Um, I'm definitely going to uh, the Headless Horseman. Okay. Which is a which is the hayride. Um, I'll probably hit a few on Long Island just to show my support out here. Just, you, you gotta. Um, I'll probably go to Six Flags again. We went to Six Flags last year. Okay. It's just it's it's always fun, and I'm trying to branch out. Uh, yeah, I was I was seeing some in Ohio that looked like they were really good. <laughs> um, and Florida, where like I like I said, I went last year. We went for literally 24 hours, 5 a.m. to 5 a.m. This year, we're going to do a three-day trip and because Disney is actually doing something for Halloween and Universal. So, Universal is doing some badass shit. Man. Cool. I, I love Universal. It's, they, like, because I went there last year with the Killer Clowns, it, it's what inspired me to finally get my tattoo on both sides of my ribs. Yeah. Like, I, I've, had the, I've had the idea for 15 years, and I finally did it. Very cool. So. Very cool. All right, man. Well, it's that time. And we got to slap some numbers on this bad boy and see how this thing actually did. All right. All right. We, we are classifying this one as an immersive hunt. Definitely not a walkthrough hunt. So we're going to go with our immersive categories. Um, we'll go over them real quick before we jump into it. Immersive factor. 
Uh, were you a part of the story? Could the story have continued without your presence? Uh, the physicality of it, um, how they handled you, how much physicality there was, was it in control? How the actors did on a scale of one to 10, obviously. Um, the scare factor. And we'll end it out with the overall experience. So, Louis, starting off with immersive factor. What do you got? I'll give it about a seven. It, like it, it was, it was there, but like I said, they could have definitely done more. Mm -hmm. Um, I like, I don't know, maybe, maybe I'm just a little too brave for certain things, and I probably shouldn't say that because on the next one, I might poop my pants. You know, <laughs> it's <laughs> well, like, like I said, like the the actors can't go too hard, but it, it was definitely fun. It, it, they they definitely did some great things to certain people. It was worse than what I got, so I got in, in my experience it was a seven. But I can't speak for everyone. I got you. I got you. That's all we're looking for, man. Just just what it was for you. Um, all right. So immersive factor was a seven out of ten. That moves us on to physicality. What you got? Um, probably about a five. Okay. I I definitely felt like you know they they definitely could have done a lot more physicality. Like no, no pain factor into it, but a lot of it is walk through haunted houses. Um, I was kind of hoping more people would jump out and take you away into a whole different section, but it's you know it's it's just something that Kim can think about for the next time. Okay, all right. Um, acting, what you got? Acting, nine out of ten. Nine. Like they, all all the actors are great. I know a lot of them are you know they they come back every year. They love what they do. They show passion for it, and none of them fell out of uh, out of character at all. Thirteen hours, and these kids were just at it the whole time. It was awesome. Very cool. All right, so we had we had a seven out of ten for immersive, five out of ten for physicality, excellent score, nine out of ten for acting. That brings us to scare factor. What we got? I'll give it, I'll give it a six, mm -hmm. just because I'm, I'm I guess I'm hard to scare, but. They they definitely did they they did their job. I know a lot of people were definitely feared the whole time, fearful of a lot of things. Certain actors you didn't want to go near because you know that they're like the bad guys in the whole thing. Okay. So they they did their part, but it's it's just hard to scare me, I guess. I got you. I got you. I struggle with the same thing. I struggle with the same thing. <laughs> It sucks sometimes. <laughs> sometimes yeah. it's like, man, I wish I wish just that once. That would be cool. Okay. So I, I get it. I get it. And I always try to give a little more weight than care factor too, because I just you realize that about yourself. Um all right, man. Let's, let's kill it out. Overall experience. What you got? I got I'll give it an eight and a half. Okay. It, it was okay. it was so the, it's definitely something snuck in a half on it. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not. It was the I, I would do it again. Like when I was speaking to Kim and she said that this was the last year for at least a while, I was upset, but I'm glad that I got to be part of the last year that she was doing it. And it just makes me want to search out for other ones that might be across the country at this point. Right. If I have to leave the country to go to a really crazy one, so yeah. be it. You know. <laughs> And you hear most of people, the most of people about some things to do with these immersive haunts. So if you're if you're really interested and you want to talk about it more, man, PM us at any point in time. We can really, Absolutely. really open up your eyes to some stuff around here. Some stuff that's a more local to you than what you might think. Hey, how close is Shock Theater to you? The Shock Theater is very close. Yeah. Um, but um, anyway, so, uh, you know, number one, thank you for, for doing this. Uh, with you, man. Thank you for having me. Hey, man, it was really fun. It was fun. <clears throat> We've never done this before, you know, let somebody else come in and, and, uh, and do some ratings for us. So we, like, we, we thought about it a lot, but we think you've got the right mindset for this stuff and you, you, you seem to have the right passion and, um, and really enjoy it for the same reasons, man. And, and it was a pleasure to have you on, man. It's a pleasure I appreciate it. And Monday night and um, everybody else out there, y'all make sure you check it out, like, share. Um, somebody's gonna be eating a motherfucking spider before this shit's like done. <laughs> Alright, so if anything else, you're gonna have to watch that. Um, but anyways, Louie, we thank you. Guys, we thank you guys. 9 30. Till then, see you soon. Thanks again, Louie. Thanks, guys.